Good afternoon, Bishop Art Theatre friends. I'm here with Miriam, who is one of the featured playwrights for our Women's Theatre Festival called Down for the Count, running March 29th through April 15th. So here we are with Miriam. Hello. Hi, Sergio. Thank you for having me. And um, thank you for supporting Bishop Arts Theatre. Yeah, so just a little bit about, um, tell us a little bit about who you are, Miriam, and you know what she's about. <laughs> <laughs> um, you will regret asking okay, this question. Uh -oh. um, I'm Miriam. I was born and raised in Pakistan, but I've lived in Dallas longer than I've ever lived anywhere. So mm -hmm. I consider myself a citizen of Dallas. Yeah. Um, I am um, a theater artist and a visual artist. And um, I asked myself some time ago what that means. Mm -hmm. And I think what it means is that I just like stories and I want to be a storyteller. And it doesn't matter what form or field or what vehicle I use to tell my stories, mm -hmm. as long as the story gets told, I'm okay with it. So I've used drawing and painting and theater and dance mm -hmm. and animation to do all of that uh, storytelling. So I guess you could say, I'm Miriam, I'm from <laughs> Dallas, and I'm a storyteller. You're a storyteller. So Miriam, so what are some of your inspirations for storytelling and um, how, how do you go about maybe that process? Hmm. Uh, I grew up on stories. Okay. Uh, my parents read to me when I couldn't read, and then they were getting tired of telling me all the stories, so I learned <laughs> how to read very fast. And um, I just, every day to me was like a beautiful story, so I would even ask people to tell me stories, and when they would run out of stories, I'd say, well, tell me about your day, and I would listen to their day like a story. Oh. And part of the storytelling process for me is taking an unexamined tiny moment in somebody's life, mm -hmm. and, and by somebody I mean a leaf of a plant or a tree standing in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. and tell its story that we might otherwise miss mm -hmm. because we're not thinking about it. So, um, tell us a little bit about the play that we're doing for Down for the Count. Mm -hmm. So, your play is called Jo Chao. Wait, Jo Chao Tung. <gasps> he did it. Jo Chao Tung. Uh, which means whatever you want or if you want. Um, it is. Um, Don't give anything away. I want people to see it, but just tell us, you know, like how that came about. Yes, a couple of years ago, um, I am a co-founding member of a theater company in Dallas. It's called the Drama Club, mm -hmm. and the Drama Club wanted to do uh, an evening of stories. Um, so they commissioned me to write one of a fairy tale from my part of the world, so I chose Masnavi Sehrul Bayan. Uh, Masnavi is kind of a blank verse poem, mm -hmm. except it rhymes. And um, the original poem was about a young prince who gets abducted by a fairy queen, and they fall in love, they get married, but then he finds a human princess to fall in love with, and she's really, the fairy queen is really angry, so she imprisons him, but other people get into the mix and they're like, give up the prince or we'll tell your dad and we'll strip you of your powers. Oh. So I'm, I'm reading the story and I'm like, wait a second, he fell in love with her too and why does she get to lose all the power? So when I was asked to write a fairy tale story into a play, I decided to tell the story of the fairy queen whose story we may not have heard. So, mm. so yeah. from her perspective in a way. Sort of, yeah. Sort of. It's from like two or three different perspectives, mm -hmm. but I love narrators in stories. Mm -hmm. So a narrator is telling you the story mm -hmm. and gives you both sides without judgment. Just people make their own judgments in the mm -hmm. story, but the narrator is just saying, once upon a time, this is what happened. And then it's up to you to decide who's right or wrong. So it's a very fantastical story. So is fantasy a large part of your writing, a large part of your process? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why pretend otherwise? Yeah. Um, yes, it is. I, I believe in everyday magic and mm. century-long magic. And, like, I mean, have you ever seen a flower petal closely? When you look at it, mm. it's just crushed full of glitter. Mm. And it's so magical. But flowers grow every day in our life. So, yes, I like to take that one flower petal and see where the magic is. Mm. It's kind of like maybe a tree that stands in your front yard and it just stands there and you think, oh, it's a tree. But maybe the tree has an entire life and 
an entire story mm -hmm. and feelings. And so I want to tell the story of the tree from yeah. the tree's perspective. That's amazing. That's so wonderful. I love that idea that you're wanting to tell the stories from the perspective that's not her, or from the perspective that's, um, I guess, you know, that's maybe... Not easily accessible. Not easily accessible. And I guess that's why we all tell our stories, right? Mm -hmm. It's like we have we have a version to tell you that we think you may not have otherwise heard. Mm -hmm. I mean, even writing plays, I, I do not write plays to be a playwright, mm -hmm. or I do not make art to be an artist. I make art, I write my stories, I write my plays because I just want to tell that story. Yeah. And if I can share that story with a couple more people, I, that that is really the goal behind it. So I think that's wonderful because one of the reasons why we do Down for the Count is to tell the stories that aren't heard, or to mm -hmm. tell the stories from a perspective that isn't usually out there that we are normally accustomed to hearing. Mm -hmm. And so um, having your play and obviously this perspective that you have in telling the untold stories really fits in with what we're doing. And so we're very excited to have your play be part of that. And um, I'm really excited that I get to see this for me. Because a lot of you may not know, but Miriam and I have known each other for a while. We have. <laughs> we're like buds. We're like buds. <laughs> and um, I've always found you such to be such an amazing spirit. Mm -hmm. And where do you feel like that comes from? Is that part of just like your upbringing? Or um, do you just... Is that natural for you? <laughs> well, it's it's you actually. No! If you see it, I mean, you know, you could have you could have a diamond stare you in the eye and say, "Hi, I'm a diamond. I want to spend time with you," and you could be like, um, or you could see a leaf blowing in the wind and say, "Oh, that leaf is so it's really thanks. Thank yeah. you for looking at me like that." Um, part of my upbringing was. Um, um, wonderment. Mm. Uh, my father especially uh, found wonder in everything. He would just uh, crouch by a flower bush and count all the flowers and say, there are 27 flowers oh, on wow. this bush. And um, so part of partly was that. Uh -huh. um, then it was my mom who uh, every day we'd come back from school and she taught and she worked for Pakistan Radio and for Pakistan Television, but she would always take the time to feed us lunch and uh, literally with her hands. And she would say, what happened today? What was your day like? And tell me, oh, what did that person do? Did uh -huh. you see something cool? And so we got in the habit of telling our mom the story from our day. Mm -hmm. And um, then pausing and thinking, oh my god, yeah, I saw a rainbow. How magical is that? How lucky we are that we got to see it. Mm -hmm. And so I think, yeah, it's definitely a part of my upbringing. Uh, so who were some of the big female influencers in your life? Um, well, from the time I was a child, um, there was this human rights lawyer in Pakistan, Asma Jahangir, and I, I would see her sometimes in the newspaper, and you know, she always looked like, <laughs> and she especially uh, spoke up for underserved populations, mm -hmm. for underrepresented women, um, and I, I used to think to myself, whoa, she's fierce, like, mm -hmm. I want to be a lawyer, and I want to be a human rights lawyer mm -hmm. in the interior parts and where no one else goes, but I'll go and I'll do that. Mm -hmm. um, so she was a big influence, influencer in my life, and then my, both my parents um, were associated with Pakistan television, so we had this sort of close relation, or we felt, we took great ownership mm -hmm. in, like, taking pleasure in when other people in Pakistan television were created. So um, there was a playwright, uh, Fatma Suraya Bajia, she wrote these sort of family drama, epic dramas, mm -hmm. and uh, that examined the minutia of how a family exists with each other. Mm -hmm. So she was, um, she was really fun to watch, mm -hmm. like, her work. Yeah. Um, there's this amazing um, Pakistan television, um, Producer, we call them, and she, she's a director, Sahira Fazmi. Um, she she starred in some of the most amazing plays ever at the beginning of Pakistan television, um, like uh, the adaptation of Portrait of a Lady or uh, mm. Fountainhead, or you know. But she also has had this keen eye of picking the ripple on the Arabian Sea mm. or the cloud floating by while uh, creating place for a really strong Pakistani woman. Oh. So um, so I guess those are the kind of yeah. people that I heard and watched and listened to growing up. Mm -hmm. And whether or not I recognized it as a teenager, but 
they are great influences yeah. on my life. So do politics really play a large part of your role in how you create and what you write, or is that something that you really try not to engage in? How could you not engage in <laughs> We're yeah. living, yeah. we're living and breathing it every day. Politics comes out of us, yeah. I mean, out of us humans, and so um, I will not pretend that it is not, you know, mm -hmm. there. Um, in Joe Jawa's home, there are things that the... Uh, characters say, and it's their own politics, and I let the characters do their own talking. I don't force them to say things that I want to say. I mean, there were things I was like, why don't you say this? But the character's like, nope, I'm going to say this. I'm going to be a little petty over here. Um, yes, politics plays a uh, big part. It's always in the background. Um, as a woman, I recognize a lot, a lot of the politics um, sort of frames who I get to be as a woman whether in Pakistan or in America, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of interesting how politics concerning women mm -hmm. um, are the same all over the world. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of heartbreaking. Yeah. What are we, 55% of the world? I don't know! And uh, someone else wants to make decisions for us. Uh, what? So yeah. which, is, I mean, like, which is one of the reasons why we're doing Down for the Count, right. to raise the awareness of the female voice and, and those types of things. Because Barely 22% of mm -hmm, that's right. uh, playwrights are female voices, and out of them, maybe 2% are women of color. Women of color, yeah. Uh, but there's so many of them, so <laughs> what are they thinking, or yeah. what are they saying, and what do they need to tell you? In this case, in Oak Cliff, Texas, at the Bishop Arts Theater, where maybe a lot of Pakistanis have not walked through, or maybe you have not met a lot of Pakistanis, you're going to hear a story. Mm from that part of the world, mm. and you're going to hear the words and the thoughts and maybe realize that we're all not that different. We're all not that different, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So, I mean, you kind of touched on this already, but how does being a part of a festival like this, uh, celebrating female playwrights, celebrating the female voice, what does that mean to you? Um, you know, Sergio wrote to me <laughs> over the summer last year and was like, hey, Here's the festival, would you? Get? And I immediately judged myself because I really don't consider myself a playwright. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh, okay, should I do this? Well, I am at a beach right now, Sergio. <laughs> you were but at a beach. Really, I wa but really, what I was thinking was, what is my responsibility here? Mm -hmm. um, if there is no Pakistani voice in this festival, not that you're specifically looking for that, right. but it is a voice from a part of the world that you may not hear, hear from, usually, then I think I need to step forward and say, hey, here's my offering. Mm -hmm. um, I do not claim it to be a grand play or a, you know, epic poetry, but here it is. Mm -hmm. And we've got to get that initial judgment out of us mm -hmm. to present better work. Mm -hmm. So what it means to me is to when it is required to show up and then speak up. And by submitting to the festival and by accepting your generous offer, that is my way of showing up and speaking up. That's wonderful. I love that. And we're actually, we're really thankful that um, Gregory Patterson Consulting mm -hmm. is sponsoring your play, Joe mm Hell -hmm. Home. And so... Gregory, I love that guy. Yeah. And so we're really grateful that he stepped up to be able to bring that forward mm -hmm. so we can hear your voice and we can hear that part of, of the world that you're saying that we may not normally or usually hear. Thanks for everybody, <laughs> um, um, What would be something that you feel would be that the audience can take away from seeing a play like yours, George Chalopon? Right. So the play comes from an unlikely source, a, a source that a lot of people are not even aware of anymore. And I think what I want the audience to walk away from this festival carrying with them is that stories are everywhere and they're hiding and all they need is a little pampering and a little cajoling to say, come here story. So ask yourself, especially young women who attend the festival, I want them to ask themselves, I can tell a story and how can I tell my story? What is my medium? Do I need to draw it? Do I need to sculpt it? Do I need to write it? And please come and check out the play and then drop me a line, let me know what you think and, you know, join these voices yes. that are otherwise um, 
abandoned in the world. Yeah. So. All right. So we're really excited. Um, again, come see us or come see Marion's play, Joe Chow Thung, running March 29th through April 15th during Down for the Count, our Women's Theater Festival at Bishop Arts Theater Center. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.